Hi guys, so I'm always looking for fast, easy ways of painting and something I like doing is obviously rust. Uh, but in the past, to do rust, it's normally been very easy but it's a case of like building up layers of like oranges and browns and yellows and get it nice and wet and watery and all the rest of it. Uh, but as you can see from these few items I'm showing on the screen, I've done some uh, painting recently and I've added quite a lot of rust effects to these and I've done it in a very quick and easy way. Um, yeah, so that's the thing I love about this hobby. Uh, there's so many new things to find out. And obviously what I'm about to show you, um, well, it's new for me, but obviously it's been around for a long, long time. Um, and that is these lovely paints. So I only came across these, uh, well, about a week, 10 days or so ago. Yeah, like you guys, I watch a lot of videos of, well, people painting and making. Um, just because obviously the best way to learn is to sort of, well, learn from others. Try it yourself and see how it gets on. So yeah, I saw someone using these. Um, so these have been out for quite a while, but uh, yeah, very new to me. Um, and yet the results on these is just amazing. So like most paints, these need a good old shake beforehand. Uh, and by good old shake, these really do need to be shaken within an inch of their life. Um, I have also used a stirrer to sort of stir up the bottom and then give it a good old shake. But as much as that, these also need to be warm as well, or they perform better when they're warm. So generally, I'll hold it for a good five minutes or so in my uh, hand, or maybe put it in my pocket, just to sort of warm it up to room temperature. So I have already used some of these paints a little bit in those, uh, those items that I showed right at the beginning of the video. But what I want to do here is have four identical items, all painted up, uh, like fully rusted up, just so I can see the variation in each one, just so when I come to sort of doing some more sort of models and dioramas, um, yeah, I know exactly how each one sort of looks and performs. So I'm using these simple barricades just because, well, there's a nice bit of texture on these things. They are relatively small, and yeah, I'll be able to just keep them on my desk just as a reminder of what each one of these, uh, well, these rust sort of versions do. So I'm obviously getting these uh, these barricades, and I'm doing the slap chop sort of technique on them, um, basically because I'll, that's kind of like my go-to painting technique for well, pretty much everything. So yeah, I wanted to do that to the uh, to these barricades just so I'd get a true sort of reflection of, uh, well, just how the rust effect goes on over the top. As I said at the beginning, in the past, whenever I've done rust, I really have sort of like built up the layers, well, again, sort of doing like a, a base prime in about a brown, and then added some washes, um, some streaking like orange and bits and pieces. And yeah, whilst I've been able to make sort of rust reasonably well, it, uh, it's been quite like a, a long process. Whereas I've seen this stuff being used, and well the process is very simple um, but very effective which is just awesome so yeah so these four barricades three of them are well I've just used the uh, the silver speed paint and obviously this last one I am using the bronze just because this one's gonna have like the uh, the patina sort of look on it so I'm using four dirty down products here uh, I've got the normal rust then there's a yellow rust the verdigris and then a moss, um, and yeah, so I have all used a little bit of these in some some of the things I've been making already, and yeah, loved the results. And this is just how easy it is. Um, obviously, you can be more neater, more precise with this, but say for my purposes, I wanted to make the whole of these barricades, uh, well, rust buckets, just so I could see the full effect um, of how these look. So yeah, obviously, you get these out, and you can be as sparing as you need, or as slap happy as you need. And uh, obviously in this case I'm putting loads on. So what you can do with this is you put some on and you can let it dry or reasonably dry-ish for a bit and then put some more on just to sort of build up different variations in the colour. You can also put water on top of this and use that to sort of smear it around and again that helps give you a variation in uh, well in the rust sort of effect. Uh, but I really am keeping mine real simple and I am say I'm just sort of uh, going to town splodging this on. So yeah, so rather than brushing it on, I am kind of like dabbing it on. Again, this just helps with the uh, irregularities of the whole thing and makes some areas, well, have more paint than others. So even with the moss, although the moss, I must admit, um, I've only used the moss once before. That looks really good when used on sort of like things that look like they're wooden. Um, as you kind of imagine, there would be a lot of moss there. So yeah, I think when I use the moss in an actual sort of diorama or painting job, I would be a lot less sparing. Um, yeah, because I don't think you'd need much of it just to sort of, and you probably do it like streaks as well. So maybe a fine brush doing like streak lines somewhere uh, will look really good. So I've definitely got some um, some dioramas planned uh, and lined up. So look out for those videos, guys. They should be coming out, well, 
soon-ish, I guess. And don't forget to let me know if there's anything you want to see me kit bash. I say I am now getting quite a large collection of well, a variety of miniatures. Uh, so I'm using them obviously in the old bits box. Um, as yet, I want to do a lot of sort of kit bashing and say small dioramas would be quite uh, quite cool. So yeah, this is the Verdigree one. Um, again, this worked really really well on my, my recent uh, recent builds of the uh, my sort of pirate orc on the squig uh, on his metallic leg. Um, yeah, it's come out really really well. So again, guys, yeah, I I'm obviously not using this very sparingly at all. I am just chucking this on. Again, just because I wanted to see the full effect of, well, how bad you can make something look rusty. But I would certainly highly recommend this 30 Down product. Um, there's a link down below, guys. Uh, this isn't a sponsored video. They've not paid me or any of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I just really like this product. And I say the fact that it is so easy, so simple. Uh, and yeah, the results are just awesome. So again, I'm just trying to share, obviously, anything that I sort of pick up. Um, yeah, just want to obviously let you guys know. Again, I know this product's been out for a while. But to me, uh, yeah, I only came across this about 10 days ago. And I think it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. So one last thing to do with these barricades, and that's just do a little bit of dry brushing uh, with some silver, just to make them, again, come back to looking like they're, well, made of metal. So anyone who hasn't seen before, this is obviously my textured dry palette, or dry brush palette. Uh, this was made, oh, about a week ago. Uh, one of those items you never know you needed until you've got one and then it's like, oh yeah, this is pretty cool. So I kind of use that to load up the brush and to then obviously get a lot of the paint off so I can get a lovely dry brushing effect uh, and I know there's not too much paint left on my brush. So yeah, obviously using this just to sort of clip the edges just to make them look like they're a little bit worn. And for something that can be done in just seconds, I think the results are just, well, they're amazing. I say you could spend a lot more care and attention and say so I've just dabbed the uh, the paint on, but if you sort of like use a brush and sort of brush it in streaks, then well, then you'll get some streaky rust. Uh, but yeah, say so for a simple, quick little job, just to sort of see just how effective these things are. Um, yeah, absolutely love this stuff. So I may need to make some more orc vehicles and sort of terrain and sort of wall pieces as well. I do love doing my orky stuff, very very rusty, as well. They're, they're the best salvagers out there, the good old orcs. So yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, hope it was informative, and yeah, I would highly recommend good old Dirty Down and their well, their, their variety of rust effects. If there's any kind of paints you guys have seen that do some awesome, uh, awesome results in whatever it is they do, uh, yeah, let me know, guys. As I say I'm really am sort of quite new to the whole painting and a variety of paints that are out there. Um, so yeah, I am loving trying, well, trying new stuff. A big thank you to um, all my patrons and Chaos Cards for helping support the channel. There's a link down below, guys, to Chaos Cards. They do a whole range of miniatures, very well priced, and there's a discount code there you can use as well. It'd be great if you could like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Click on the other video that's on the screen. You guys all take care. See you in the next one. Bye for now.